Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to look at specific adaptations which animals have adopted in order to survive in their environments. And the first thing I want to look at is uh, how animals survive in the cold. So, cold environments. Now, one important thing that we're going to have a look at straight away is the surface area. I'm just going to write SA which stands for surface area, not South Africa, surface area to volume ratio. This colon means that these two are in a ratio. Now this is extremely important because the amount of heat that you lose out of your body is very closely related to your surface area to volume ratio. A higher surface area will mean that you lose more heat more quickly. And so if an animal is going to live in the cold, it's going to want to keep this surface area volume ratio as low as it can. Now this is summed up quite, ni quite nicely, sorry, if we have a look at a cube. So if we have a cube like so, and each side on this cube is one centimetre. Now that means that each face of the cube has an area of one centimetre squared. And so the total surface area, a cube has six faces, is six centimetres. Now what about the volume? The volume is going to be length times width times height. So one times one times one, which will give you a total of one. So six centimetres squared to one centimetre cubed. Now often when we're writing these, we just ignore the units. And we just say the surface area volume ratio here is six to one. Okay, now how about if we had a cube which looked something like this and it had sides each of length, I don't know, let's say five, five centimeters. Now the total surface area is going to be 25 times six because five times five is 25 and you've got six of those faces and so that is going to give you 150. Now the volume is going to be 5 times 5 times 5, which will give you an answer of 125. And that will give us a ratio of 1.2 to 1. And so you can see the fact that this cube is much bigger gives it a way lower surface area to volume ratio. Because this cube has smaller dimensions, more of its surface is facing the outside than the bigger cube. And that's because there's less space within the cube which is not going to be facing the outside. Whereas in here, you've got loads of space in the big cube. And so for that reason, being very large but not having flat surfaces, if you like, is going to increase your surface area, sorry, decrease your surface area to volume ratio. It's going to increase your volume. And that's why you won't find things like elephant, elephants in cold climates because they have very thin but very large ears which are sort of disc shaped and they lose loads of heat. That's why elephants have them. They will lose loads of heat because the surface area is huge and the volume is very low. Whereas if you take something like this cute little polar bear here, look at the size of this guy's ears. They're absolutely tiny and that's so that he doesn't lose heat out of these ears. And also, he's got, well, he's quite, he's quite a fat little guy. And that is good because it means that all the, all of the inside is not on the surface. So he's got a large volume and not a very large surface area. So this all helps to reduce the surface area to volume ratio. So on top of that, why are they so big? It also helps because they can store fat. So fat stores. Obviously a polar bear, this is a small polar bear, but a bigger one will have even more fat than this one and they are storing fat which allows them to be insulated. They also have thick fur. Thick fur and thick fur traps air and creates another insulating layer. And of course you know that the polar bear is living in a icy snowy environment. Ice and snow are obviously white and so the color of the polar bear is really helping it to camouflage. And this stops it from either being hunted itself, whereas polar bears, it also stops other animals that they are going to hunt from seeing them. So being camouflaged helps you find food and stops you from being food. 
Okay, now how about in really hot environments? Hot environments. Well, in a hot environment, we are going to see adaptations which are going to be almost the opposite of what we see here, uh, especially in surface area to volume ratio. In surface area to volume ratio, we are going to want to maximize this. For obvious reasons, they need to cool themselves down because it's so hot, and so they want to lose as much heat as they can. And so for that reason, many of them are small animals. Small animals. Not all of them. As I've already said, elephants are certainly not small animals at all. But if we take a look at this guy here, have a look at the size of his ears. So these massive ears are very thin and they allow very high surface area. And because they are thin, that is going to mean a low volume as well. So low volume, high surface area, and that is one mechanism that the elephant uses to stay cool. Another thing which is very difficult in a hot climate is getting water. And so, of course, you can see the trunk of the elephant here, which is very good at getting water. The elephant is large and it can store a lot of water as well, which allows it to survive for a long time. And another thing which animals have to adapt is behavior. So they need to behave in a way which is going to conserve energy and is going to conserve water. And one of these is to be most active, so most active in the evening, most active late. And that is so that when it is the hottest and the sun is the most unforgiving, they are not in the firing line there. They are not open to dehydration, losing energy in that way. They find shelter and avoid the sun as much as they can and then they go about their movement and doing what they need to do during the evening. Okay, so it's important that they need to conserve water, um, conserve their energy, and also to keep their body temperature at the right level. Stop it from going up if they live in a hot environment, and stop it from going down if they live in a cold environment. Okay, so that was just a brief overview. If you do have any questions, please do comment them in the box below or send me an email using the link, and I'll see you in the next video.